an explanation of this. If you take a wire and form it into a coil, um, and I mean this is pretty basic, form it into a coil, um, it will produce a magnetic field that is the product of how many turns of wire you have, um, how closely they are spaced, their diameter, and the current through them. Now there is a way to concentrate the lines of magnetic flux in this magnetic field. And the field will go out one end of the coil at one pole and, and the opposite pole at the other end of the coil. Uh, you can concentrate that some by instead of having air in your coil or my hand um, by having a piece of metal. Um, this would tend to focus uh, the magnetic lines of flux and particularly at the two ends of the coil. Ferrous metals, soft iron, cast iron, uh, work very well um, as cores for such mm -hmm. a, uh, a magnet and coil. And they do form a magnet. Um, in our motor, these metallic ferrous metal cores can actually be seen here a little bit. I have a little flashlight somewhere. Maybe I can shed some light on this. I don't know if we can get a camera on it. You'll see some what look like bars that go this way in the motor all the way around. They're not slanted like this. More about that in a moment. And some insulators in between them is what it looks like. Those are actually like... Uh, I-beams. Here is an I-beam. If I took my uh, wire and this surface is my uh, um, ferrous iron uh, core and I took my cable and wound it around this uh, I-beam, I could probably wire my microphone and my body <laughs> to the electric motor and after sufficient whiskey and with enough current uh, I could uh, make it into the top 10 on YouTube <laughs> but let's don't do that and we would simply wind coils of wire around this I-beam um, and that would be one of my segments in the motor. Um, the lines of force uh, from the magnetic field would be most intense right in the center along this strip. And uh, the lines flux would come out, big loop, in the bottom. Because we have kind of a shell around it, that would be somewhat contained and directed again more to mm -hmm. this point right here. Um, we can increase the intensity of that field um, by increasing the current through the wires. We don't want the wires to touch. They have insulation on them, uh, usually kind of a lacquer or, or uh, enamel uh, coating Dark magnet wire. on magnet wire. Yeah. And uh, so that makes um, uh, the insulation. Um, and that's kind of important. The ability for this motor to take heat is a function of how much current I can put through this wire um, it, in what period of time um, uh, it, without melting uh, um, the, the wire and the insulation. And that's when I lose my motor. Um, the other function that's quite critical is the distance of the rotor to this, um, which is typically thousandths of an inch. 
You notice that the uh, bars, which are essentially rough coils in the rotor, are angled slightly. And that is so that these coils are at a little bit of a bias to the lay of the coils in the motor. And as we rotate phases around the motor, at one end, this is next to one stator coil. At the other, it's next to a, 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 the, an adjoining one. And this keeps you from having little dead spots, um, kind, kind of a jerky, jerky yeah. thing. And it actually causes some harmonics and hum um, uh, that is kind of reduced in that way. And so you normally see squirrel cage uh, rotors or modified squirrel cage rotors with this slight bias to these coils. It's called an AC induction motor. What happens is our, uh, our coil and, uh, and core, our stator, wi stator winding, um, puts out an intense magnetic field and that induces a current. A current causes a magnetic field, but a magnetic field also induces a current in a conductor. Um, and that's uh, the basis of a transformer. You put current in one winding, it induces current in the uh, very closely coupled uh, winding, usually around a ferrous mm -hmm. iron core. In this case, our lines of magnetic flux in the stator windings induce currents in these uh, very large bar type um, coils uh, in the rotor. And when they do, as I said, um, uh, magnetic fields induce currents. Currents cause magnetic fields. <laughs> well, would you believe that by inducing mm -hmm. a current in the opposite direction to the current in the stator, we also cause a very slight magnetic field to build up around that conductor. And it's a counter a magnetic field. All right. And okay. so they resist each other. They want to get away. Um, this is magic to me. Uh, this is the power of the universe. This is what real nuclear power is about. Um, I ran this by Brian the other day. We, we have kind of the right idea, but the wrong scale um, when it comes to atomic theory. Um, if you took the nucleus and right. made it the size of a basketball, and a typical atom, and the, uh, the electrons the size of a ping pong ball. Um, we could put the basketball on the table, the electrons would be rotating through San Francisco and New York City, uh, not out here as you picture them. They're mostly space. So since they're mostly space, I should be able to put my two hands through each other. Actually, I can't actually get them to touch in reality. They're not actually touching. If I try to force it, say with a knife blade, it'll actually cause a arterial spurting <laughs> disrupt my, uh, my hand. Um, but actually, my hand never touched the blade. The blade never touched my hand, and my two hands never did touch. What you're feeling is this magnetic force, this atomic force, um, really. Uh, it, nuclear fission is not atomic power. <laughs> the power of the atom is that electrons really don't want to be together and they'll do anything to get apart. Yep. Um, and, and based on those magnetic and electrostatic field charges. And so uh, while we're mostly space, uh, the, just like two magnets, you put them a little bit together, isn't that cute? It's a little bit of a tug. You put them a little closer together, now you can feel the force. If you try to squeeze them together, one of them is going to flip out of your hand. You weren't clumsy. You can't ever get them to actually touch. Uh, as the closer they get, the more intense that get that becomes, and it's it's the most powerful force in, in the universe, I think. By distance, note that these uh, rotors. Uh, it's in thousands Thousand, yeah. of an inch, these coils, uh, from the end of these coils. And they're a foot long. And there's a lot of them. 
and so if we put currents through these coils and rotate them in phase, it causes this to turn. In fact, I just saw a YouTube video. If you put a Coke can in here and rotate it in phase, the Coke can will turn. A <laughs> oh, copper man. pipe, no coils to it. You <laughs> stick a copper pipe in and rotate it in phase, it'll spin. You can put a, a steel ball in here and mm. it'll rotate it'll around rotate. the inside of the thing. That's, that's how strong 